Hi everyone, welcome to the Math Rebel. I'm your host, Anil. In this episode, we're going to be helping Rashi out with the Pythagorean Theorem, but first we're going to focus on how everyone else works the Sugya. To review, the five cases were the seeds, the courtyard, the judge's error, the ladders, and the collapsed roof. <laughs> Tosos address the seed case by interpreting the case differently. They say that the seeds on the sides are centered and 1.6 fachim long, leaving a 2.2 tefach gap on either side. The diagonal is thus, in their words, 3 and a fifth of a fifth, that is 3.08. Tosos note Rashi's error in the courtyard case, but don't offer a solution of their own. By the Diane de Caesari, Tosus explained that they are referring to area. A square inside a circle has a diagonal equaling the diameter. Thus, its area would be the diameter over root 2 squared, or half of the square of the diameter. The circle is pi r squared, or 3 times a quarter of the diameter squares. Thus, the circle is half again the area of the inside square. The Gemara, though, assumed that they were talking about perimeter and pointed out that they're clearly wrong by the fact that the entire square can fit inside the circle and that the square is not a concave shape proves that the circle has a bigger perimeter. In a similar vein, the Me'iri takes Reb Yochanan's statement regarding the window to mean 24 square tzvachim, the bottom two of which will encompass part of the square, as each arc of the circle outside the square contains two tzvachim, the Gra takes a drastically different approach by introducing a second square. Rabbi Yochanan was referring to 24 tefachim around the square surrounding the circle, not the circle surrounding the inner square. When the Dayani de Kesari were referring to the inner square being a half, he meant half of the outer square, and this indeed is accurate. Before I get to actually explaining Rashi, I'd like to express my gratitude to Rav David Bloom of the Kol Ian Hadaf for his time and effort in helping me with this sugya. In respect to the seeds, the Yad David by Rav David Zitzheimer explains that Rashi doesn't actually require the three tefach distance. All he requires is a clear separation. Although the perpendicular seeds meet this criteria, only seeds in the same direction with one tefach in one direction and two in the other can be considered having this hacker. In respect to the courtyards, the Sfas Emes explains that the door frames are included in the count, which would bring the distance up to four tefachim. In respect to the ladders, the Sfas Emes explains that the four tefachim Rashi keeps talking about are part of the, la- of the ladder. I find this hard to read into the wording of Rashi, but conceptually it fits his facts. On a related note, the parallel Yerushalmi says that one needs Kedei Makom to ascend the ladder for it to be a kosher Erev. The Karen Ora explains this to mean that there needs to be room to ascend comfortably. Perhaps, said Rabbi Bloom, this Kedei Makom is what Rashi was referring to with his four Tzvachim. Finally, in respect to the breached roof, the Sfas Emes once again comes to the defense of Rashi and says that he argues with Tosfos on how to measure a breach. Rashi says it goes along the sides, and Tosfos says it goes on the diameter. If you will recall the two stadim of the Tash base we mentioned earlier, one explanation of pi equals three was just to make things easier. However, for practical halacha, we can't rely on this. Rabbi Bloom also suggested that Rashi is doing the same with his comments. Not that we actually add the size to get the hypotenuse, but that we pretend we can just to make things easier to understand. He proved this from a comment by the Beis Yosef that Rashi is a commentator, not a posek, and from a comment by the Tosus Yantif that Rashi explains Mishnais according to the Havmina of the Gemara so that the reader can walk through the Sugya the way the Gemara did. On the opposite extreme is Rosh Hashiva of the Kol Ian Hadaf, Rabbi Mordechai Kornfeld. See that you have two pieces of meat, and you know one is kosher and one is treif. The Shulchan Aruch paskins that both are aser, even if the treif piece is only treif durabanan. This is because it's not a suffix, says the Shach, but rather a chisar nidia. We just don't know which is which. With more knowledge, we'd be able to resolve the doubts. Likewise, Rashi says that since we don't know how to solve for irrational numbers as would result from the Pythagorean theorem, we need to be stringent and add the sides together. And that's it, folks. Thanks for watching, and as always, please like, subscribe, and comment if you enjoyed.
Next episode, we're going to return to the round Sukkah Sugya to prove that Tosa's new integral calculus before it was invented.